Can I just get the team news, the latest news ahead of tomorrow's big game? Uh, depend, depend. What do you want to know? <laughs> Everything, all the players. Who's <laughs> back, how's Reese James? Is Thiago out for the rest of the season? There's a number of players. Okay, not uh, uh, no good news uh, because we cannot recover any player from the last list. Only we need to add, add two players more, Thiago and, and Disasi, they will be not available for tomorrow. Thiago obviously announcing he's leaving Chelsea. It was a very emotional video. I just want to give you the opportunity for you to, to speak about him. What a brilliant signing he was for Chelsea and how much will the club miss him, his influence in the dressing room? Of course, it's an amazing guy, he's an amazing professional. Uh, we are not, I'm not going to discover the, the type of player, you know, playing nearly to 40 years old and seeing it's, a, it's an amazing career. Of course, uh, the player, the fans, uh, the club is going to miss him. And, and of course, but he's happy, he's uh, so proud about his career here in in Chelsea and in the different clubs also. And only only to wish the best, because he deserves the best. He said that your speech at half-time against Villa made a real impact and it could have been so different, it could have been three points. Do you still have that anger? Because I thought you handled it well against Man City, but that anger after the Aston Villa match? Yes, of course. Uh, every single game is a challenge for us. Uh, and now we have tomorrow a big challenge against Tottenham, that is a, a, a great team like Tottenham. No? I think it's, it's going to be good, it's going to be a nice game to play. I think it's a great opportunity for San Kita to, to be on the, on the bench and to have the possibility maybe to play. I think um, when this opportunity appears, it's, it's about to, it has to be conscious and to say, come on, step up and say the kids, we are here. And we want to be there and we want to play for the first team on Chelsea. And I think it's a great opportunity tomorrow and for sure it's going to be a great game. Just on uh, VAR still, uh, Ange Sweden rejected VAR. Ange Postacoglu said he might move there. Do you want to move there with him potentially? If, sorry? <laughs> no VAR in Sweden. Ange Postacoglu said he might move there. Would you like to join him? No, I don't know what he said. What he said that he's he's not a bit, he's not happy with the VAR from Sunday's match against Arsenal. Of course, you've had disappointments. There's no VAR in Sweden. He's going to Sweden. He said as a joke. Do you want to join him on the plane? Well, maybe you know. Why not? Why not? Um, the Premier League big news this week on potential spending caps. Um, are you in favour of spending caps, and how do you think it would potentially affect Chelsea and the Premier League? I, I wasn't involved. I am not involved in the process. I don't know what is the right answer. Well, I mean, if it might affect your recruitment potentially in the summer? I don't know. We'll wait and see then. We'll wait and see. Um, Tottenham, of course, as you've mentioned, a huge derby, but an emotional one for you. It's a fixture you've known very well as well. So just tell us how special tomorrow night is going to be. I think it was special when we played there. Um, because it was my first time after to, to leave the club. And now it's like, uh, well, it's a different, it's a different thing. Of course, always emotional because we are going to meet people that we work for a long period. And yes, what I cannot hide is my emotion for, for, for the club, you know. And I think it's, yes, it's going to be emotional because uh, always when you face a former, your former team and, and when the history was uh, good, you know, that always you remember and, and, and of course, but I think it's, like I told before, uh, 90 minutes, uh, we want to win and Tottenham for sure came, is going to come here to try to win also and it's going to be a, for sure a good win. Thank you. You're welcome. Alex. Hi Mauricio. Hi. Tomorrow will be your 400th game as a manager in England. Did you know that? No. A lot of games, a lot of games. So how would you sum up your time here as a manager? Amazing, I think it's a dream come true. The truth that was, I think maybe I explained, and I want to be repetitive. Uh, it always was for me to think and to come here to England and to, to be a coach here. Uh, it was impossible thinking, no, in machine. But after the decision of my wife and, and my <laughs> friend here, Jesus, they convinced me to join uh, Southampton. And yes, I think it was one of the best decisions in my, in my life, no, to come here in England and enjoy 
uh, this great, uh, you know, football um, country, and, and of course, um, I feel really comfortable. It's like home. What has the most challenging time been? Would you say? No, I think every single period was amazing challenge for us. I think to arrive to Southampton, when no one uh, knows us and try to convince the player and to translate our idea about football when in England uh, there was before, no, arrive Pep or arrive uh, Klopp. And only, I think, was, you know, uh, Brendan that uh, was trying to settle a, a different football. I think it was an amazing challenge after, and we met, um, I think, an unbelievable club, unbelievable chairman, unbelievable people, staff, you know, uh, players. And it was an amazing journey in Southampton, and then Tottenham. That was amazing also because the challenge was to create a team um, that uh, can, you know, uh, compete and challenge the the big side. And after one year and one year and a half, we were challenging. And for five, six, nearly six years, we were challenging the big teams and. Um, being in a final of the Champions League, building a, a new stadium, new training ground, I think to be part of this uh, journey also was an amazing challenge and uh, was an amazing time. And now, arriving uh, here to Chelsea in this also amazing club with an amazing history, uh, in a process, you know, to try to to develop, uh, you know, and be in a, an exciting project that. Um, Knowing that we need time, maybe it's the most challenging period now. You have 400 more games in you. You want 400 more? I, I think uh, we are still young, no? <laughs> yeah. We are still Not young. Years, yeah. <laughs> yes, I think, I think we are trying now to enjoy every single day and try to provide our knowledge and our experience to, to our club. And, and of course, um, always is, uh, that is our obsession or passion. And it's the adrenaline that we, we we want to feel in our body every time that we go for a training or, or to compete on a game. And that is, I think, uh, the football need to push out of the of the field. Um, I think it's difficult to say I'm going to stop to be a coach or we are going to stop to to be you know doing what we love to do. Um, we'll see. Hope yes, can achieve you know another 400 uh, games here. One manager that hasn't been in England long is Ange Postecoglou. How highly do you rate him? What qualities does he have to make him a top manager? Would you say? No, I think he recovered. Uh, he recovered for the fans and for the club. The the hope, you know, mm -hmm. they are playing a very good football, and I think um, it's of of course always is difficult. Uh, when you arrive to a new country, and the challenge is massive, but uh, he's uh, doing a fantastic job. And every time that you watch uh, Tottenham, you enjoy how they play. Thanks. Good luck tomorrow. You're welcome. Thank you. Alex, BBC. Hi, Mauricio. Uh, against Arsenal, you said your players gave up during the match. So how pleased were you with the fight back at Aston Villa? Yes, so pleased because it's about to learn. It's a process that we need to learn. It's a process that you need to leave the, the experience and to learn from the experience. Um, that is a challenge and this is a massive challenge you know, to have this potential talented player, you know, competing in the most tough league in the world. Does that show how quickly young players can adapt to an experience? Yes, with up and downs, but I think, yes, they, they are learning. Of course, that is a process and it's a time that they are learning. Um, we need to help and force them, you know, to realize in the in the areas that they need to improve and the, in the areas that they can be better. Um, different project because we were talking before about project when it's one, two or three players, young players that always is easier. When you have plenty of young players, always is more, uh, it's not more difficult, but yes, uh, you need more time, you know, to spend and, and you need more time to provide more time for them to learn. Thank you. Moose, talk about. Hi, Mauricio. How Hello. are you? Um, 400 games. One of them was the so-called Battle of Stamford Bridge. Do you remember that when you were Spurs manager and drew with Chelsea <laughs> and Leicester won the title? Can you talk us through your emotions that night? Because that was a pretty wild game. Yes, uh, I remember really well. Still, my memory is good. And uh, that was a, a really tough game. It was a difficult night. I seen 
we needed to win, and Chelsea was, you know, with an experienced team. I remember there was Fabregas, uh, Hazard, you know, what a team, no? Uh, Chelsea was. No younger, if not with experience, and um, they, w they were not doing a fantastic uh, season, but a one game they can compete well, because they know how to compete, and they were tough for us. I think we started the game really well, winning 2 nil, and then they scored in the, the last moment on the first half, 2-1 and then 2-2. Two -two. And of course, it was a battle because we wanted to win. We were very competitive and, and sometimes we crossed the line, you know, and that um, yeah, was, was a really um, difficult moment, but um, yes, showed uh, how com competitive we were. You know, we thought that in this moment, that is why after a few, few years after, we went to the final of the Champions League because we were building a very competitive team. And you were quite animated on the touchline, weren't you? You were getting right. Involved. No, I tried to say, relax and calm. I tried to... <laughs> <laughs> really, did you? I, I think so. I, 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 I lose my memory now. Yeah, I, I, I don't <laughs> remember. I don't remember so well. <laughs> you got a bit older in the last year. Yeah, I understand. Uh, it was also a pretty wild game earlier in the season. Uh, uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium when you went back for the first time. Yeah, it was was a game that uh, yes yeah, was a tough game because they start really well and then always you need you know to not only to play well if not to have some lucky some luck and I think uh, too many things were for us and again again Tottenham in the first uh, in the first game that we played this season in in the Tottenham Stadium uh, yes but hope. Hope that the, the positive thing uh, will be in our side tomorrow, and, and because for us it's really important the three points. Finally, you asked about VAR earlier. Um, suggestions that maybe soon, maybe next season, we might be able to hear the referee might be able to give so that everyone in the stadium can hear what why he's made the decision, like you have in, in cricket. Like rugby, yes. Rugby, yeah. Your yes. favourite sport other than football, rugby. Um, do you do you welcome that? The referee may be able to tell us all why he's made it. Yeah, we need to prove, you know. <laughs> why not? We need to to try to improve in the way that we can assess the thing and to inform the fans. It's true that the football is changing, the business is changing, everything is changing, and we cannot stop the evolution of uh, the football. I think it's, um, like you, you, you asked me before, I think we cannot stop. Uh, the evolution of the technology. VAR is here and it's difficult that uh, a league like uh, the Premier League is going back to the to the to the past. But I think it's thing that we can improve things. If we can improve things, I think is are very welcome. Thank you. Last question in the broadcast section, Liam from Athletic. Hi, Marissa. Um, have you and your staff managed to figure out why? I, I need to be honest. Um, what I can say is always in, a, in all the um, new process and new uh, structure, always, you know, things uh, we can do better, of course. We are not going to, not to, we all feel the responsibility. Of course that we can do better. And then in some circumstances that is too many circumstances that happen, that is why. And it's difficult to explain with one word or, one, or, or with one sentence. Um, of course, that we are uh, working in trying to improve. I think we have an amazing staff, medical staff, performance area, coaching staff. And I think we have all experience uh, managing clubs and, and being in this, in this business. Uh, when some circumstances arrive, too many circumstances arrive, Sometime in some period can happen. Of course, that we need to be now uh, when on the end of the season to put all the information on the table and try to you know to 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 be better next season. We need to improve in all the I don't know. I can say communication uh, dynamics, uh, strategies, or everything that we need to put our knowledge to try to improve and coordinate better. Of course, all the. The things that can we can improve, but I think is is 
the quality is here is only that is like happens sometimes with the team, no? That the team why not perform? Yes, we know why we we are assessing why, but the inconsistency of the new uh, project, you know, sometimes can. But this, I don't say that is that is too many things that maybe are all together today, and that is why we are suffering so so many issues. Thank you. Uh, yeah, last quick one then. Peter Alpin, Pochettino, doing well. I would just like to ask about Mike Wake because he scored against Villa at the weekend, and I was wondering, do you expect him to kick on for the rest of the season? If I expect so, do you expect him to continue his progress for the rest of the season? Yes, of course, he's doing well. He scored against Aston Villa. He's improving a lot in um, without the ball. I think the challenge for him is to is to improve without ball. Is to be more connected in a defensive, uh, you know, uh, side. I think he's he can he can because have the profile. Of course, hope that he can uh, profit the or take advantage of the the possibility to play more until to the end of the season.